Well, good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate here on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is nutrient efficiency. On today's call, we're joined by Austin Ali, CEO, Intrinsics Bio. Over every acre of farmland exists about 45 tons of nitrogen in the air, more than enough to grow any crop. The problem is nitrogen is in a form that's not directly available to plants. Intrinsic Bio's technology collects the natural symbiotic microbes that exist all around us and enables plants to tap into this nitrogen source directly from the air. Its microbial inoculants reduce input costs, enhance yields, and help the environment. Each of you knows the companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest and most talented people in Intrinsic's market. You are potential customers for Intrinsic's products and services. You have built a company similar to Intrinsic's or you're, you're, you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities Intrinsic's may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. And while the poll is running, a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information, help Intrinsics find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships to help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. And so without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Austin Ali, CEO of Intrinsics Bio. Austin, please feel free to take it away. Thank you, David. Let's see. And you want me to keep it on this slide for a moment, you said? Before yeah, that's perfect. I think we're good to go. OK, great. Well, well, thanks, everyone, for joining. It's a, an honor to be to be invited to present here. You know, what, what I like to tell folks about what we've accomplished here is that really we've successfully commercialized three decades of the leading academic research in the plant microbiome. And we've really developed this diverse microbial platform that it enhances crop nutritional use, nutritional use efficiency across the board. So not, not just nitrogen, as, as I'll get into shortly. Our product saw a successful launch in the UK market in cereals and, and in oilseed last summer. We're also approved there now for organic use. But you know the market traction in the UK has been great. Right now, we are expecting to be the number one microbial product for UK cereals this year, which is pretty exciting. We're going to be launching in the US for specialty crops later this year, a soft launch in broad acre crops in the US in the spring, and also in the EU market in the spring. So certainly the, the nitrogen fixation is the, the most exciting part of of what we have commercialized, really microbes that live inside of plants that can pull the nitrogen from the air directly into the plants throughout the roots, stems, and leaves of plants. But that it's not just a nitrogen play. We, we already knew that it enhances uptake of phosphorus and helps mobilize insoluble forms of phosphorus in the soil for uptake. There was actually the Department of Energy came out with a paper about this in collaboration with the, the professor that's doing this work at the University of Washington with these microbes in our collection. That paper came out in like November, and I did not actually know it was going to come out at that time. And all of a sudden, our website got hits and requests to buy and distribute our phosphorus product from you know, every corner of the world, South America, Sweden. South Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa. It was uh, really caught us off guard, but you know we have a pretty pretty good problem that we have uh, more interest than than we can handle here. But uh, it's uh, it's it's a very exciting area to work in. You know what's really unique about these microbes that we've commercialized is how broadly relevant they are across crop categories, and we've been very fortunate in that each of these areas uh, we're we're working with market leaders. And we're rolling it out in phases. You know, first broad acre crops had mentioned cereals and oils, but we are located in California 
And so we have gotten great traction in specialty crops here in California. And I'll be talking about forestry a little bit, uh, a little bit later as well. So these microbes are, are what are known as endophytes. Much of the use of microbials in agriculture has been focused on soil microbes or root associated microbes. But these endophytes live throughout the inside of plants, between plant cells and actually inside of plant cells. That's also this image in, in the background behind my head here. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Early in this journey, I remember talking with with someone in the ag industry who, who asked me, you know, these, endo, these microbes, they invade and infect the plant. Why isn't the plant fighting off this infection? And, you know, a couple of things there. First off, it's not an infection. These are not pathogens. But also, you know, what we believe this shows is that this is an ancient relationship. The plant recognizes the microbes as beneficial microbes that are there, there to help, really. So this, this collection of microbes that we've licensed and commercialized, it's, it's coming from what are known as uh, pioneer plants, particularly a species of trees that, you know, in the word of the professor that discovered them, you know, they can scratch a living out of river rock. They can grow in these very nutrient poor, inhospitable conditions. This photo on the left here, this shows these, these types of trees, uh, poplar and willow trees growing in rock and sand. And it's really their microbiome which helps them grow in that environment. You know, you think of plants and microbes, they evolve together in these types of low nutrient environments without fertilizers. And it's really their microbiome that helped them do that. And, you know, we believe that we're returning something that's been lost in the transition from natural ecosystems to modern agriculture. You know, pioneer trees like these, if a, if a forest fire devastates an area, these are the first trees to come back. You know, they can grow in those inhospitable soil conditions and they grow up, they provide shade, they drop their leaf litter, which provides nutrition, carbon, but also this microbial transfer to the plants on the forest floor, including the ancestors of modern crop plants grasses that are, you know, have now turned into corn, wheat, rice over, over many, many years. And we believe this is why these microbes from pioneer trees, from early examples of, of plants and plant evolution, we believe this is why these microbes are so broadly applicable across so many crop types. So, you know, this, this photo here that I've shown, this is from the mountains of Washington state where, where these types of microbes were, were first discovered. Now, for months out of the year with snowmelt and, and rain, the river is quite very high. So these plants are essentially dealing with flooding conditions. But for other months out of the year when the river is very low, they're facing drought conditions. Similarly, in the summer, it may be over 100 degrees for weeks at a time in this region. And in the winter, they may see several feet of snow. And really, it's, it's this microbiome that is helping them deal with those variable and, and stressful environmental conditions. So we've been very fortunate over the years to have some fantastic collaborators that have recognized the, the value and the importance of this work, this research that we've commercialized. I believe currently we have four USDA funded collaborations underway where the USDA scientists came to us based on the strength of the publications coming out of the university. And you know we were at quite an early stage with, with very limited uh, resources and they agreed to fund that on their own because they saw the promise for agriculture. The US Geological Survey, they are testing our microbes for revegetation of native grasslands, as well as for use of revegetation of, of mine sites, these uh, contaminated, challenging environmental conditions. The National Science Foundation, uh, back in February, they gave us a quarter million dollar grant to 
look deeper into the salinity tolerance benefits of our microbes, which have already been proven and published in the lab. You know, with after drought and flooding, you really see salinity as another big challenge that's becoming increasingly prevalent with climate change. The Wells Fargo Foundation, they gave us also a quarter million dollar grant to work with the Danforth Center, particularly looking at our microbes for, for corn seed treatment. But really just fantastic collaborators and it's, it's how we've been able to accomplish so much. Really, it's been humbling to see all the press mentions of our efforts, but also of the university professor's research. In the bottom left, that's the, uh, the Department of Energy publication that I mentioned that came out back in November that got uh, a lot of interest uh, internationally and through our website. You know, despite the obvious challenges of 2020, it, it was a great year for us. And 2021 is looking even better. Our UK launch was uh, with our distributor, Union Biosciences. And it was very well received. We've seen adoption and distribution from some of the UK's leading landowners, uh, distributors, and, and seed companies. You know, this is the first successful endophytes product in the, in the UK market. I mentioned that our distributor, Union Biosciences, they actually led our seed investment last year along with Masso, which is the largest independent agrochemical distributor in Spain. So these are, these are organizations that tested our products in the field for a couple of years. They really got to kick the tires under agronomically relevant real world conditions and are, are now true believers. So they've been, they've been fantastic to work with. That product in the, in the photo in the middle, Tiros, that is our first product. It is a seed treatment that is done very well in, in the UK market, particularly for cereals and for, for oil seeds. Now, microbes in agriculture just have not always had the best reputation. Personally, I, I'm new to agriculture. It's only been the last uh, six years in working with this, this startup. But you know, I've heard numerous times farmers refer to microbials as bugs in a jug because they, they feel like they don't really know what they're getting. They don't know if the microbes are alive. They don't know if it's actually working in the field. And it's really, it's through the last six years of R&D that we've been able to overcome these historical challenges and really develop well-formulated, shelf-stable, targeted microbial products. And most importantly, these are products that integrate into existing farming practices. You know, that's one thing that, that I really want to, to emphasize here. And, and again, going back when, you know, we're past the technology validation. We know our product works. We also know that it works through conventional distribution channels and we don't need to to reinvent the wheel there. So that's, that's been uh, tremendous for us, especially for a company that is at a fairly early stage. So, you know, these, we've really got this diverse set of product formulations that allow us multiple deployment methods in the field. We're leading with seed treatment, but we've also successfully tested and developed uh, foliar products, in furrow, and, and that these products can also be run through, uh, through fertigation systems. But really across all these methods, we've seen the same benefits in enhanced yield and quality. So enhanced, uh, enhanced nutrition, which is especially, especially valued in, in, in specialty crops. But you know, reduced fertilizer need and the improvement in crop stress tolerance, all of which benefits the farmer's bottom line. You know, I mentioned how we're leading in seed treatment. You know, nice thing about our microbials and seed treatment is that they start delivering those benefits very early on. You know, in, in these photos, you can see, so T50 is the time it takes for 50% of the seeds to germinate. In this case, the T50 was comparable, but the actual germination was much more robust and visibly enhanced. Now, farmers like this, because the, the difference is typically very, 
very clearly visible in the field from the earliest days of the season with this early emergence, more robust establishment and, and more greenness. And you know, those benefits continue throughout the season. They, the microbes grow up with the plants and continue, continue delivering those benefits, including enhanced nitrogen and, and other, uh, other nutrients important for plant health. You know, you can see in the, in the photo on the left, the, uh, the treated side just really has that denser canopy and that uh, the wheat retains its greenness later into the final weeks of the season, which in this case had a tremendous impact on the, on the, on the yield and, and the farmer's, uh, farmer's bottom line. And this is something we've seen consistently across crop types. Uh, we've tested in well over 20 different crops plus forestry. And you know, it's one thing to see a benefit, it's another thing to see a consistent benefit. A 90% win rate in, in most of these crops is uh, quite high for a microbial product. So we're, we're testing across the US, several European countries, a couple countries in Africa and Asia, and uh, our first trials in Latin America, hopefully before the end of this year. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but just Again, it's really unique that these microbials are so broadly relevant across crop types. And in, in many of these crops, we're working with market. Just very briefly, you know, these microbes come from trees. The forestry sector has actually been aware of this work for, for quite a long time coming out of the university. In this photo, you know, this was in Oregon under a severe heat stress, again, showing the, the stress tolerance benefits of these microbes. But we have gotten some interest from some of the largest players in the U.S. forestry market, and particularly in, in carbon reforestation. Our, these microbes have been tested at a, at a site that, that now has North America's largest carbon reforestation project underway. And we'll have some pretty exciting announcements about this, hopefully in the coming weeks. You know, it's, it's been quite a journey. We've gotten a lot done and the next few years do not look any less busy. Again, we're rolling things out in phases by crop type and by region. And we're, we're pretty excited about the future. And so I'll, I'll pass it back to you folks. And thank you again for the invitation to speak. Thank you so much for a fantastic presentation. Really appreciate the important and uh, impressive work you guys have accomplished thus, thus far. To reiterate to our audience, you can ask a question by using the Q&A box found in the middle of the screen. Um, you can also raise your hand and I'll unmute you to ask your question out loud. I would just ask that you please don't type the questions into the chat window. Uh, it just makes, it just makes the handling the questions a little bit more challenging. So if you, had, if you do have questions now is a great time. You know, Austin, one thing that, you know, I would mention is just wanted to touch back on that, on that main point sort of about the perception of, of microbial solutions in agriculture and a ton of impressive research has been done today, but also a lot of promises that maybe haven't, haven't been kept. How, how do you work through some of those challenges? And how much skepticism do you typically see? And, and, and what, are, what are the main pieces in what Intrinsics is doing that get either growers, retailers, or others over the edge? Or maybe there's still some skepticism other solutions that use microbes. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think with growers and with distributors, really targeting those early adopters, those folks that are looking for something different. And oftentimes it's folks that are keeping up on the newest research and publications. So we've benefited immensely in that the, uh, the professor, uh, Sharon Doty at the University of Washington, she's been publishing about this work for, well, for, for decades really, but it's uh, the, the, the accolades she's gotten, the attention she's gotten has, has accelerated quite a bit in the last five years. And so in some of these cases, it was collaborators, value collaborators that came to us initially because they saw the publications coming out or they had seen her present at a, at a leading uh, conference. So that was how some of the early adopters came to be, but you know, nothing speaks like 
like data in the field. And so really, you know, we were the first folks to take this out of the lab, out of the greenhouse and into the field. And, you know, I think I've benefited immensely from, from my co-founder, Dr. John Freeman, our chief scientist, who, you know, I like to say he's bilingual. He, he can speak the language of the academics, kind of where he comes from, but he can also speak the language of the farmer. And so it's really like working with the right folks, finding those early adopters and uh, having the data to back it up has, uh, has really been, been immense for us. But also, I mean, our, our board members and advisors have been a, a huge, huge benefit for us because most of them have a long history in microbials. So different aspects of it from the actual fermentation, the develop, the formulation of the products, but then also really how do you sell and market microbials through conventional distribution channels. And you're right, that is, that is an area that I, I feel like a lot of the microbials on the market, uh, especially among new startups, you know, they have challenges in the integration and really being able to go through distribution channels and deliver a viable product to the farmer. Well, let's think we have a couple of questions here from the audience. The first is, how would you, how would your product compare with, with ones from Pivot Bio? So products that Pivot Bio produces. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, Pivot Bio is, has accomplished some, some great things. I, I'm glad that you know, that they've already told the nitrogen story very well. So when I talk with, um, with collaborators or potential, you know, funders, they already know the, the, the negative impacts of nitrogen fertilizer. You know, they, they've led with a corn in furrow product. I understand they, they have new products that have come out more recently. I have not seen uh, the data on that yet. Um, but, you know, our product is, uh, it does work as a corn and furrow, and we are working to bring a corn and furrow product to market there. But it's not just an inferro product. We have these different, different types, and it's not just limited to corn or corn plus. I think they've done work in sorghum uh, and, and wheat. But, you know, our product works across over 20 different crop types plus forestry. So I, I think in the word of one ag professor that talked with us early in the process, he, he said, it's, it's quite remarkable how promiscuous your microbes are, which is a funny, funny choice of words, but it is unique that they can just work, they work so broadly across crops, but it's not just a nitrogen play. They enhance uptake of phosphorus and the, you know, potassium micronutrients, macronutrients and micronutrients. So it's the, it's the, the nutritional story, but also that they improve abiotic stress, the, the drought, the flooding, the salinity, the temperature extremes. But I, 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 I would say that my understanding is that our product is, is you know, it, we, we have the performance data to back it up. I, I can't speak to, to Pivot Bio's field results in the last year. And I can't speak to the, the shelf stability of their product and how it could, you know, be delivered to the farmer. But I believe that our, from what we've seen, our product does very well on both of those fronts. Awesome. One final question we have from the audience. Can this product be used in organic production? Yes, absolutely. It is approved for organic use in the UK and in Ireland right now. And we've gotten some very strong in, inorganic use here in, in California, specifically for specialty crops, for, for vegetables and permanent crops. So absolutely. I mean, we're coming out first with the conventional product, but uh, we already are working with the regulatory, regulatory consultants that, so or, organic is definitely in the pipeline. Well, I'll pause here and see if there's any final questions from the audience before we move to our next section. Well, seeing none, Austin, I have one last question for you. What can our audience do to help you out here today? Well, I'm certainly not here to, to solicit investment as, as you, we made clear at the beginning of this presentation, but you know, we are still looking for strategic 
collaborators. I think we have some fantastic ones lined up as we, as we go to market here in the U S and, and in the EU, you know, finding potential customers and distribution channels is, is, uh, is always of, of strong interest, you know, Latin America, we've gotten great interest there. We're about to get our first trials there. Certainly collaborators into, into that area would be of interest. Um, there are other areas where, you know, it's on our list, but we're going after the bigger markets of, of North America and Europe first. I mean, really where we've seen the, you know, the biggest impact of our microbials is under, well, lower fertilizer regimes. You know, when we first did the initial screenings with the, with these microbes, just to better understand how to use them, how to formulate them. You know, we were testing under very, very low nutrient poor conditions, something like 10% of standard agronomic rates. And the, uh, the differences there were astounding. In some cases, the difference between, you know, plants coming to yield and plants just, you know, really, really struggling. So, so we think that, you know, some of the biggest impact on yield is going to be developing countries that use much lower rates of fertilizer that, than you see in the U.S. And, and in Europe. You know, I think another thing that, another big reason that we're excited about the European market, I, uh, one of our collaborators there really, uh, he said, you know, products like yours are going to be a necessity for Europe. There's the, the farm to fork initiative, which is in the pipeline coming, coming down in, in the coming years where Farmers in the EU will have to drastically reduce their, their rates of fertilizer, nitrogen, among others, and, and to maintain the kind of yields that they have now. I do believe uh, you know, our, our collaborators, right, products like ours are going to be key to that process. Um, awesome. We do have one final question that, uh, that popped up here. What's the regulatory status in the US, EU, and the rest of the world for your products? Yeah, absolutely. We were, I, I think our UK distributor also was, was uh, pleasantly surprised as were we that the, that the UK regulatory office gave us approval right away. Or, you know, it, was, it was much, much quicker than we were expecting because we had the data to back it up. We know that the, the strains we were commercializing first, you know, these are ones that not only do we have the bet, you know, very good efficacy data in, but that do not are not associated with regulatory challenges. Um, they're considered ubiquitous in the environment. They, they've been identified in, in different regions and different continents. And, and so in, in the UK, regulatory approval was, uh, was, was quite, quite quick. Another thing that helped was that we had the uh, full genome sequencing of the microbes and were able to show the bioinformatics analysis, confirming that they have no genes associated with a uh, human, well, mammalian or plant pathogenicity. So that's been a tremendous help. But also, you know, regulators here in the U.S. have been quite supportive. I remember when we first reached out to, to CDFA, there, a scientist, uh, the scientist who picked up the phone, he said, oh, someone's finally commercializing Professor Sharon Doty's work. That's great. We've been following her work for years. So that was immensely gratifying. So you know, because, because of the strains that we selected are not associated with uh, those types of regulatory challenges, we, we see uh, quite a streamlined path to market. Awesome. Well, Austin, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us today and congrats again on, on all the yeah. progress to date. For, for, I'd like to also thank the audience for your active participation. We host these agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. If you'd like to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. I'll replay this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. If you'd like to learn more, join us next week when we host My Land, an exciting company harnessing native organics to rapidly rebuild sustainable soils. Austin, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to our audience. We look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And Feel free to reach out. My contact information is up if, if you want to talk or have more questions. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.